Hey groups, so excited to see you guys again today. I can't believe it. This is our last group's content for the year. Um, what we typically do is in the summer, we take content off. We don't meet as groups. But what I do want to encourage you is we're going to be sending out an email to the leaders here shortly. Um, with some ideas for the summer, we're actually kind of crafting some gift bags for you guys to do as a whole group that you can meet a few times over the summer. So be looking for that email coming to your inboxes shortly. Um, but let's dive right into group's content. Um, we have been talking in this series about our relationships to others and how much the relationships around us matter um, and how we can point to Jesus in those moments. We spent time talking about our relationships to our parents, our spouses, our kids, um, and we're moving into the relationship with our friends. Um, and I know for me, the, the friends is a hard one to figure out. How do you have conversations with Jesus about with them, about Jesus with them. Um, so let's dive right into these questions, and I hope um, these questions give you life in how, how you have that relationship with your friends about Jesus Christ. So let's jump right in. The first question says this. You're going to have to think back here a little bit. Who was your first friend when you just started school? Think about the very first friend that you ever had. Question number two, what do you look for in a friend today? Um, and maybe compare the two from the last question. Are there different things that you're looking for in a friend today than you weren't looking for in a friend years ago or you were looking for different things? Talk about those things. Question number three. Um, there is a list of Proverbs in the questions. I'll, I'll read those in just a second. But after you go through all of those verses, I want you to um, describe what Proverbs says about what to look for in a friend. Um, and that's coming out of Proverbs 27.10, 17.17, 18.24, and 27.9. If you didn't get a chance to write those down, they are in the group's uh, question that you can print off. So take a look. What do those Proverbs describe about what it means to be a good friend? Question number four. When you think about all of those things from Proverbs that talk about being a good friend um, and what the characteristics of those things are, would your friends describe you as a good friend? Would they describe you with those type of characteristics? Why or why not? I want to pivot now for next question, question number five, um, thinking about the life of Jesus and the friends that he has around him. So the question is this, who do you think knew Jesus best? Who would you say made up his closest friends? Maybe you mentioned him as one of Jesus' closest friends, but I think Peter was very high up there in uh, people Jesus would call the closest. Uh, but what's interesting about the life of Peter is we know that he denied Jesus uh, when Jesus was turned into authorities. He denied knowing who Jesus was. Um, he ran away from the confrontation that was there. How could this happen? How do you think this could happen in Peter's life after walking with Jesus for those three years, the life of Jesus' ministry? Why do you think Peter did that, and how did that happen? Now, for Peter, um, in this next group of questions, the moment that seemed to shift his life uh, was the moment of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down into Peter's life. What we see is that he went from someone who really wasn't a good friend to somebody who became a leader in the early church and was going all over talking about the good news about who Jesus Christ is. 
Um, what we realize is that when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are justified before God. Our sins are paid for and we are forgiven. But when we receive Jesus, he also gives us the helper, the Holy Spirit, which is this moment of Pentecost for Peter, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, we begin, begin the process of sanctification. Um, and that's sometimes a big churchy, world, churchy word, but I think it's super important. Sanctification, we begin that process as the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and starts working inside of us. Um, at the foundry, we call that transformation. It means that what we're doing, uh, the old life, we have left that behind, and the new life we've been given through the Holy Spirit, we start transforming to be who Jesus has called us to be. That when other people look at us, they see Jesus through the way we act and the way we treat people around us. That's transformation. It's the day-to-day -day growth and the changes that make us more like Christ. So here's the question in this. Um, and I want you to hold each other accountable in your group and think about what, what those big words mean, the sanctification and the transformation. Um, is this a new thought to you? Is that concept of the Holy Spirit and the moment of Pentecost for Peter, is that a new thought to you? Have you ever stopped... Um, have you ever stopped at being justified and tried to keep up with the new righteousness in your own power? And how did that go? You see, when, I th when we think about what it means to be made new, um, it's not just about being made new. It's being, being remade, oh God, I'm, I'm butchering the language of this, but being renewed in the Holy Spirit constantly. Uh, just by being new, we... We can't just stop it being made new. It's the life that comes after this. It's being renewed continuously in the Holy Spirit and allowing him to work in our lives. Um, what questions do you have about that? Talk about that amongst your group. Do you understand what it means to be renewed in the Holy Spirit? Uh, does that make sense to you guys? Maybe, maybe allow, allow yourselves to ask some questions about that in your group and um, explore what some answers might be for each other in those moments. And as always, um, make sure you end with prayer together because um, we strongly believe in the power of prayer in groups especially. Um, and uh, with that being said, if you do have some more time and you would like to dig into the digging deeper section, um, the digging deeper section actually goes into what we'll be talking about next week a little bit with the idea of how our relationship matters with our neighbors, the people all around us that aren't necessarily as close as our friends, our spouses, um, our children, all of those people. What does it mean to be like Christ to them? Um, so I strongly encourage you, if you have some time, check that out. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great summer. I hope you're able to connect and still gather together, have some bonfires, have a cookout, um, stay connected because um, I think we know now more than ever what it means and how important it is to have community around us. So I hope you guys have a great summer. We will see you next fall with some more content, and I'm so excited to see how God lives in you over the next summer. Have a great week.